Good evening, everyone. Welcome. This is the Red Hook Town Board meeting of November 14th, 2023. Would you be kind enough to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. We anticipate having a brief meeting this evening with an abbreviated agenda. Then we are going to be going into, or we anticipate, I should say, going into executive session to discuss a matter under negotiation. Um, tonight's agenda, Danielle, up on the screen. I apologize, the first draft is up there. Um, but very simply, we're, we're getting an update on um, the project. Um, Forest Park uh, drainage, and um, we have resolutions to set public hearings to amend the fiscal year 2024 fire company contracts. And so I'll clarify that. For other business, we do have a change order uh, related to the Rec Park Connector project, um, and Ryan can give us a brief explanation of that as well. And without further ado, it is the first meeting in the month, and so we review the uh, financials as they exist at the end of the period. This period is ending October 31st, 2023. We started with an opening balance of $5,925,000. We had receipts of $2.5 million, disbursements of $3.6 million, final ending balance of $4.8 million. Four million. Um, you have uh, both your variance with four board members, and uh, we we'll believe we have some budget adjustments from our bookkeeper and Conway reductions and increases in appropriations. Um, as we are tracking for the end of the year, things are looking pretty good. Um, we did receive our uh, six month payment and um, I went closest to the pen because you know the budget for uh, 2023 for uh, mortgage tax was 275,000 it came in at like 274.7 or something like that that will never ever happen again um, any questions on any of these budget adjustments If not, uh, would anybody entertain a motion to accept the supervisor's report? So moved. Thank you, William. Second. Thank you, Jacob. <coughs> All in favor, Julia. Aye. And myself, I, inclusive of the um, budget <coughs> adjustments, yeah? Okay. We also have a town clerk's report. Do we have that up here? We do. There we go. Okay. Yeah, thank you. The town's clerk, town clerk's report for the um, month ending October 1st to October 31st. Total shares remitted to the supervisor, $6,111.01. Um, total shares um, uh, paid to the New York State Agriculture and Market for the spay-neuter program, $33. Amount paid to the New York State Department of Health for marriage licenses, $45 and the amount paid to New York State Environmental Conservation for hunting fishing licenses, $1,343.99. Total state, county, and local revenues, $7,533. Terrific, thank you. And there you have some abstracts. Oh, also yeah. Being. And um, abstracts um, for the month of October 2023. Um, I certify that the vouchers numbered 31102 to 31260 processed in the month of October 2023 are an accurate reporting of the abstracts approved for payment by the town board. Thank you very much. Is there a motion to accept the town clerk's report? So moved. Thank you, Jacob. Second? Second. Thank you, Julia. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Moving right along. We have some announcements. Uh, 
United Methodist Church is having a great night on November 18th. Historic Red Hook is having a trivia night also on November 18th. There's a coat drive at the Elks Lodge, um, which is um, currently taking place and through uh, the end of the month. November, and you can drop off at the lodge Wednesday through Sunday after 4 p.m. So it's Wednesday through Sunday. Um, other announcements, just congratulating you, Jacob and Bill, on your re-election. Thank you. Um, to see you. Thank you. Um, and to uh, Teresa Burke, the highway superintendent, as well. And Lisa. And Lisa Lawford our new town justice and Tom Mansfield on his re-election as town justice as well. Um, we also would like to congratulate Hardy Roots Farm on uh, their awarding of um, Cookingham East. We wish them well. Um, as folks may recall, they got their start here in Red Hook and couldn't find a farm. Um, in the town to acquire, and uh, they found a place in Claremont, and now they have, uh, assuming all goes well with the closing, uh, property here in the town of Red Oak, so we wish them well. All right, uh, uh, Sawkill, so Winnicky has a volunteer second Saturday's stewardship if you would like to help maintain trails, it's December 9th on your calendar, it's bound to be in full. Second Saturdays, invasive species <coughs> all trail maintenance. Learn more from Jen Adams, who is the Assistant Director of Land Stewardship. Okay, I'm going to skip the first item on the agenda since we have Ryan with us and we have members of the public interested, I believe, in the second item on the agenda. We will. Actually, I have to go to a separate. Did we get this up in time? Did we include it in the backup? Oh, yes. No, I didn't make it. Okay. Hang on. We'll get there. I think there was an agenda. It was a traditional packet. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, before we get started, did anybody have any public comments that they'd like to make? Linda, please. Yeah, I have a question about uh, page eight on the town approved budget adjustment. <coughs> Could you tell me what the six thousand dollars is for St. Margaret's General? <coughs> for the particular item, uh, I would have to check with the bookkeeper and get back to you on what that adjustment is for. Okay. Yeah. I also would like to find out how much is being spent on St. Margaret's, we haven't had any reports. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Ryan, take it away. And Ryan, if you'd be kind enough to just give everybody a couple minutes summation of where we've been and where we hope to be headed with Forest Park drainage. Sure. I think that's almost our whole presentation here tonight. Okay. But for those of you that may not remember, we kind of started this back in 2022, looking at kind of drainage issues that were happening over there. We surveyed the community and tried to isolate some uh, problematic areas where they had roadway flooding. And we surveyed the community from kind of two different prongs. One looked at, were we having flooding of private property? And then two, uh, was the town having issues with the public roadway and was that causing a safety issue for folks? So in that process back in 2022, we identified uh, two particular locations. 
that uh, were giving us the most issues within that community. That's not to say there's not other issues within the community, um, but the two that gave the largest issues were Apple Tree Drive and Shady Lane. Um, in February of 2023, we had uh, written an amendment to the town to kind of further along that design. Um, it was not only further along that design, but look at alternatives. As part of our preliminary look at the community, we thought maybe a more rustic drainage system would be more appropriate, something that had swales along each side of the roadside um, and driveway culverts under all the driveways in the area. Um, but we were missing some basic information at that time. We didn't have survey of the community to understand topographically what's happening in the area. We also didn't understand distances for right-of-ways, um, how much space on either side of those roadways we had. So in February of 2023, we had uh, written an amendment to the town um, to go ahead and get that survey information, have them do the survey, allow us to look at alternatives. Um, some of the feedback we had received from the community was they, they weren't in love with the swales along the roadway. They were afraid of what that would do to the maintenance requirements for the yards in front of their homes, how that would affect maybe current improvements that either may or may not be within the right-of-way but have been long-term improvements that they happen to like in front of their homes. Um, and so they asked us to look at an alternative before we pushed forward with the design. Um, so the first step in that amendment was for us to look at alternatives. Um, and we did that in the spring of 2023. We kind of looked at, there are two alternatives where if we did a grass swale situation, would that fit within the right of way? And two, if we did a pipe and catch basin drainage system, um, knowing that that would fit within the roadway, what would that do to project costs and how could we offset that project cost? So in, uh, through the spring of 2023, we, we developed project costs and we realized that there was a, a delta between the two projects. We knew there was gonna be, but it was a delta of like $150,000 between swales and catch basins and pipes. Um, at that time, there was an opportunity for us to apply for a grant for CFA under Climate Smart Communities. I'm sure we, were, we did a resolution from the town board to apply for that grant. Uh, at the end of July in 2023, we applied for the grant to kind of cover the excess costs for the catch basin and piped drainage system. Um, and right now we're kind of in the process of waiting on that. Um, given that that's kind of a long lead time process, we thought it was probably appropriate to kind of report back to the public and the board about where we are in the design process, kind of what those two alternatives look like. And then hopefully, you know, we hear back in the next couple of months, right, Robert, around, about CFAs. Um, and not that the project will begin right away, but once we hear back about from the CFAs and we can make a decision on which way we're gonna go, maybe in 2024 or at a later date, we can get um, some kind of design put together and, and construction. Um, did I miss anything on where we were, where we're going, and what we're trying to do, Robert? No, I think you hit, hit the nail. We, we are anticipating, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of things are getting pushed to January when the governor uh, yeah. Unveils for budget. Um, we'll, we'll see the, when it actually gets announced. Okay. So for our two different design alternatives, just so everyone kind of understands what we're looking at, um, we've provided a little cross section, which you can see and used to be able to see <laughs> in the lower left-hand corner there. Um, for our swale alter alternative, we're basically looking at a two-foot deep swale, and that's not driven by. Uh, storm water flow. These are fairly small watershed areas. The depth is driven by needing to get the proper cover as a driveway crosses over top of a culvert. I need to get that culvert low enough for it to pass under the driveway without being a structural issue. I think we've all seen communities where the pipe's too high and it creates that ripple in the driveway and then it ends up the pipe wears out and doesn't last the lifetime it should. Um, so we've, we've shown a, a swale that's two feet deep with a one, in, one on two slope and that's fairly steep. We originally didn't want it to be that steep, but because of the right-of-way areas on either side of the road that we received in the survey, we had to kind of condense that swale down. That, that leaves you with a swale that's nine feet wide at top, one foot wide at the bottom, and two foot deep. Um, it's not an irregular swale design, but it is aggressive for this kind of community where you have, right now you have kind of a flat surface between everything. Very, um, very flat there. Yeah. yeah. Um, the positives to the swale drainage system, just to kind of remind everyone why we had first identified it as, a, as, a, as an alternative, was that there's a lot of homes in this community that have sump pumps. There's, there's generally wet basements. 
Um, and while we can't take the stormwater out of the ground for them, or we can't take the groundwater out of the ground for them, um, we thought it would be a mutual benefit if there was an opportunity to have a place for them to discharge to that wasn't onto the town owned road. Right now, the town's highway regulations say that we can't discharge to the road because it can create that safety issue. So catch basins are small catch points that are located in, in key locations along the road, but they require stormwater to flow down the edge of the road, which can cause that icing condition. That's originally why we had uh, identified the swale condition, or the swale opportunity as um, the ideal fix. Once we saw how that relates to those proposed improvements, or the existing improvements that the community already has within the right of way, as well as there's some utilities in the area, there is water lines that are uh, located there. There is utility poles. I think one utility pole would need to be located, relocated, maybe two, depending on what design we ended up with finally. Um, those type of conflicts along the roadway edge made the catch basin option kind of more favorable. Um, Robert, do you want to shift the shady lane where we show the two swales there? Oh, I forgot I did this. Okay, so I reorganized these so that they were project by project. So for the Shady Lane catch basin option, we're looking at three or four locations along Shady Lane to add catch basins. Again, the number of catch basins being provided there is not because of the drainage area that's coming to that area. It's to provide additional opportunities. It's so flat, we're trying to catch all those little low spots that are within the road so that we don't leave behind something. If we had the opportunity, and this was a new community, we would probably provide more undulation to the road so that we could kind of have a high point and two low points on either side of the road. We don't really have that advantage now. We've already built driveways and houses and all of that. So we're trying to work with what we've got. Um, the end result would be a series of catch basins located on either side of Shady Lane at key locations. These locations were picked based on photographs provided by the residents um, when they were doing the initial survey. They showed us areas, you know, the pictures are valuable in a lot of ways. We can use it to go get grants, but it's also selling us, these are great low spots. Like I can see this is flooded. Um, so, you know, we've provided catch basins, what we think are the ideal locations um, along the roadway, and then we're able to tie that into the existing drainage system. Um, in general, the drainage system has to be very flat in order for us to get pitch across that roadway. But we think we've come up with a solution that will provide enough slope to get stormwater out of the area um, while still tying into the existing drainage system and not having to rebuild the existing system right now. If you guys remember from our initial report, we kind of gave you two, two options, right? We started with saying, hey, you have a collection issue in these two areas. That would be phase one of this. But also you have a capacity issue downstream of this. And this is going to handle the smaller storms, the more frequent storms that you see. But in larger storm events, like a 25-year storm, you may see some backing up because your downstream drainage system has not been set up to handle this storm event. Um, I, I think you know the town's approach is to first take on collection, and then down the road we'll probably look at how we can increase conveyance so that we can get rid of the stormwater for all the storm events. Um, yeah, that's Shady Lane. For Apple Tree Drive, we took much of the same approach. Um, Apple Tree Drive, I would say the swale option may have more of an opportunity. There's less things along. Uh, Apple Tree Drive that need to be relocated. I think there's still a couple of items. The other thing we've kind of realized while we were doing this is the sheer linear feet of pipe for, for driveway crossings. By the time you add that up on both sides of the road, you're almost there, you're almost there anyway. Yeah. Um, and so I, I don't know that the catch basin, I don't know which one we'll end up with and it may have, it may have to deal with what, when we end up getting grant money, prioritizing what we can do in each location and trying to get the most we can out of that grant. Um, but we've looked at both options along the road. We've looked at a swale option with driveway culverts along both sides. Um, and we've also looked at a catch basin. The dimensions of the swale and everything are the same in this option that we talked about in Shady Lane. There's no differences there. Um, there's some minor things that we're gonna have to do, uh, like a relocated mailbox, relocated sign. Uh, there's one utility pole on Apple Tree Drive. I think we may be able to avoid it. We'll, we'll see as we kind of Get a little bit further into design. If we can avoid that utility pole, we'll try and we'll try and leave it where it is, and um, and do a swale there. Any questions from the board about kind of what we've looked at and where we think we're headed? I have one. Sure. Uh, 
thank you. This was really helpful, and I always appreciate you kind of walking us back through the steps. Yeah. It, you know, it does so just sort of show up on the agenda periodically. Um, you mentioned that one of the perceived advantages or, or maybe sort of ancillary benefits of the swale option would be that it, it could potentially accommodate some uh, sort of runoff from private properties. Yeah. Um, does the pipe and catch basin option provide that same potential benefit or not really? We, so not as well as I'd like. So there's, we've kind of also strategically placed some catch basins where I know there's points where we're discharging. We actually have a couple of catch basins already that are collecting stormwater from a few houses on Shady Lane at the, that would be the west end of it. Um, as we went back, we tried to identify both low points and where roof leaders and or some pumps are discharging. And I don't think I showed it on this map. Uh, some of them are shown on this map. Um, and we just tried to identify where those come. We will pick up some of them. I can't guarantee we catch all of them. I've kind of tried to drive by through the neighborhood during rainstorms and try and pick up where we have them, but it's like whack-a-mole, one will push out one way, <coughs> one spot, and then it'll be another two weeks and I'll find one somewhere else. So I, we still have that opportunity to pick it up in some key locations, but I think, you know, in general, it would be our hope that, you know, the community will pull the, the water off the stormwater or off the road where we can, but if the community can discharge to this, for instance, on Shady Lane behind to the northeast, there's a wetland area. We could, if we could discharge as much of that stormwater to that area, or as much of the sump pump and roof leader water to that area, and keep it off the road, um, that would be beneficial to the roadway. Okay. That would require easements. Though. All of them have uh, backyards that front that wetland area, okay. but not all of them. The, the houses on the north side of Shady Lane and on the north side of Apple Tree all have opportunity to discharge to that wetland. And that wetland ultimately ties back into the downstream drainage system. So um, it would just keep it from hitting the road and, and causing that icing condition. I think that's kind of where we started was that the icing condition was causing an issue for the highway department. And they were they were having to do unnecessary maintenance on the road, uh, over salting and things like that. Very good. OK. Um, as, as always with a grant funded project, we shall see. Right. Sure. Let's uh, keep our fingers crossed. I, I don't know, I'm somewhat optimistic. I just think that this is sort of the new, the new infrastructure is the retrofit, right? For the changing climate, obviously there's been flooding going on here for, for quite some time, but it's, it's only gonna get worse and uh, mm -hmm. You know, this is important that we adapt the infrastructure to make sure that these houses in this important community are okay moving forward. Um, and that they're not inundated with water and our roadways. Obviously, it's all about the roadways for us. That's our responsibility. And it's at some point hard to tell where the water is coming, you know, from. Is it a is a roadway issue? Is it a design, well, it's clearly a design issue. I mean, what developers were allowed to build back in the day. Um, you know, you look at Linden Acres and some of those houses should, should never have been built. Um, OK. Well, good. So uh, January, hopefully, we'll hear one way or the other, and we'll have you back. Then. Yeah, I think by January you'll hear, and then it, I know it'll take a little bit of time for you to kind of work out contracts issues with the state, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we'll well obviously that's if it's all well, if it's not <laughs> right, right. we'll end up in a different direction. We're not yeah. doing work in the winter anyway, Ryan. Um, yeah, but you'd be surprised how fast it, it catches up on us. By the time if you're interested in getting bid documents out, obviously we'll want to get started um, as soon as possible. You're putting the groundhog out of a job is that what you're doing? <laughs> no, no, we never no, do that. No. Um, before you leave, Ryan, can we can we uh, sure. do you have a, a change order on the REC connector project? It's essentially, going back to kind of more of what we had envisioned for the project. Now that we got those temporary easements on the property owner, some corrections on slopes there, and uh, a, a little bit of additional split rail fence. Um, Yes, so 
I don't, does everyone have a copy of this change order? Probably not. Okay. Thank you. So uh, the first item that's listed on the change order is additional split rail fence. Um, this is to kind of create a, a better divider between the rec part, the rec connector project and private property where there's kind of near access and it would, it kind of lends itself to folks wanting to kind of venture down into private property. Um, we've had a meeting with a resident and they are interested in trying to kind of create a delineation to kind of keep folks up on the rec park connector project. And so that additional split rail fence creates that delineation. Um, item number two or listed as PCO number three, which says grading adjustments at west side ramp. This is um, associated with the portion of the connector that goes through Rec Park West. You may remember this big S curve that was kind of to meet ADA standards and not have to be a ramp. Um, after we graded it, John and the Rec Park group came, kind of came over and looked at it from a maintenance perspective. They were feeling kind of uncomfortable with the slopes that were there. They thought maintenance would, it, would be a little tough, particularly where it makes curves. Um, their lawnmower equipment. They're just afraid long term that that was going to be too tough for them to maintain. They had asked us to kind of make a uh, quick change to the to the grading in that area. So we kind of soften slopes for them. So long term, they're able to maintain that that uh, slope that goes down to the ramp. Um, the change for number one fruit rug, which is as extend driveway tie in. This was kind of a change we always saw coming. Um, I think residents were probably a little hesitant to kind of jump on town work and the great change between the back of the rec park connector sidewalk down to this driveway is very steep. Um, we had kind of identified it as being too steep to begin with. We told them we'd install it, they could take a look at it, and if it, was, if it wasn't acceptable, we'd come back. Um, they have had an opportunity to look at it. They're having some issues with lower cars getting through the area. Um, and so they've identified it as an issue and like us to fix that tie-in so that it's a smoother transition down to the driveway. Um, and then number three, fruit bud lane, the extend back slope grading. Um, this was another one that we kind of always knew it was gonna be steep. We were trying to keep it within the uh, right-of-way line. It's a three-on-one slope. After looking at it, the resident wasn't very happy with what that did to their yard area. And so they've asked for us to soften that slope. So that will require Jerry to bring in more fill, kind of soften it a little bit so that we're not, um, we're not leaving with something that's unmaintainable for them. Yeah. Um, and for us. And for us, and for correct. Us, it, it's a slope that yeah, will we'll be falling onto the property. Yeah. Total of those change orders is 13.8. Um, in general, they're, they're fairly small change orders, but by the time they all add up, it adds to 13.8, which would bring the contract value to $284,750. Additionally, um, we've added a change in here for contract time, um, which is not shown on the contract and change price category, but down below under change in contract times. Um, originally, the contract was supposed to be a substantial completion at uh, November 4th and ready for final payment by November 19th. Um, the project is substantially complete other than our changes we've made here. Um, there's one delay as far as date uh, the gate manufacturing was going to always be four to six weeks. We didn't catch that in that change order that we issued at that time. Um, that would put the gate in in the contractor's hands sometime by the end of November. I want to give him a week or so so that he can get it installed. Our anticipation would be that he's substantially complete with the project by December 15th. Um, and then we, so that's a 41 day time extension. Um, and then the final payment, I've moved to spring of next year. Um, only from a vegetation perspective. The contractor's gonna do some grading work now if we approve these change orders, and that seed is not gonna take this year. They don't wanna leave the town in a spot where they're trying to reestablish seed in the spring. So Jerry would come back, do an evaluation of the site. We'd go on a site walk with them. He would come back and reseed the slopes in April, and hopefully by May we would be out of the project completely. We could do final completion. And you need to change that from 23 to 24 there. Just a little Thank bit. you, Chris. Just make sure you change that on yours yeah. and on the official one. Unless it was really quick. Uh, that's gonna, we're going to get to that zone where I'm going to do that for yeah. a month or two. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, I have a question. Sure. Um, so on the change order sheet, it lists um, number one for but the driveway tie-in yeah. at $5,900. On the contracting sheet, it's listed at $6,400. And I'm wondering what the reason for the difference between the two is. Good question. 
We only have this in an email, so I probably need to attach the email to it. The PCL originally was for $6,400. We went back to the contractor and said, can you do a little bit better for us? He did as best he could and came back with a $500 reduction in cost. So, uh, yeah. I'm glad that it's the lower price. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had a question just about the payment timing. This is maybe for Robert. I know that we have grant funding that's uh, helping to support this project. Is the buffing it into May of next year a problem at all in terms of you know, our funding sources? No, because uh, our funding was only for $100,000 worth of okay. project. So we'll, we will have exhausted that already. I'm thinking about my part to uh, to make grants, so it's going to be different. You, yeah, I think you're right, Robert. Yeah, I don't think they're going to. I think we'll be. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this, this puts us about where we thought we would be before we, we had these things in there. Then we had to take them out because yeah. we didn't have the easements and then the property owners gave us the temporary easements. So, um, and we're going to be planning a tree. Correct. When, when, when the line there on the property line was dying, and so we had to pull it out. Um, what type of tree is that? That's going to be the like? A red. Yeah, that's something, right? <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's OK. You and me both with remembering our trees. <laughs> Certainly, we can get the board that response. Just to, just, <laughs> yeah. to, just to know that there'll be a tree planted on yeah. the side. Um, good. Well, that's helpful. Um, Is there time for a few questions about the Forest Park project? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you had. Oh, no, of, of course, absolutely. Um, Gerard, yes, please. Go ahead. Thank you for the plans, Ryan. Sure. Um, I was, um, I, you know, was a person on the street and having talked to people, we, of course, would prefer the closed, but we see, I see Ryan's point about the swale design. I don't know if we could do some of the swale not as aggressive. I don't know if you need to put in um, a closed system. I think if you stopped at the three catch basins here, most of the time, the way the road is paved right now, the water stays on the side of the road. So you might not have to have the whole cost of this. Um, the thing I, I don't know, because I looked up some engineering slopes for storm drainage, municipal storm drainage. And the math I understand, if you go from where Apple Tree Drive meets Shady Lane on the east side, all the way to where Shady Lane meets Birchwood, and then go through the four parcels over to Edgewood, and then where the outfall finally ends up right in here, it's 1,000 feet, 1,100 feet right. roughly. Oh, yeah. I, I used 40 feet for the width of the road. I didn't know what the road width was. I think you're close there, yeah. And what the numbers, I think we need an eight foot drop in elevation between, and I think there is space for eight foot drop elevation, but I don't know the depth of the catch basins on Edgewood, and I don't think it's a closed pipe between Apple Tree and Edgewood. You're, you're correct that that pipe is not closed the whole way. I think the majority of that pipe drop happens along Edgewood Drive as it heads towards where the wellhead for the community is. And so, you know, we were trying to balance budget options within the community, realizing that we can't just blow right. all the stormwater away and start again. So we're trying to tie into what would be that existing catch basin that uh, that gets piped through the four parcels and then comes out in that open swell just before it goes to Edgewood. And so our invert, while there may be six feet of elevation drop between that catch basin and where it discharges to the wetlands on the west hand side, we only have a couple of feet. I think it's really less than two feet of drop between what you see Apple Tree Drive and the other side of yeah other side of Shady Lane. Um, certainly we will try to maximize slopes so that we can we can get as much water out of the way as possible. Yeah, and what else? Um, I was thinking, you know, two feet drop and nine foot wide swale seems really aggressive, but is there a way to do where the road meets the lawn? Do like a small swale, maybe four to six inches deep, then berm it up on the grass and make that grass berm like four or six inches high. This way the water that flows on the ground and not into the road has a time, some time to seep into the aquifer instead of going into the drainage system. 
Yeah, I would, is, could we, is there a way to fine tune that to do maybe the best of both? I would be worried about impounding water on a resident's property by creating that little berm you're talking about. It, yeah, it no, but great. The, the water comes from the resident's property a lot of times, so you would think the resident would work with the town to kind of help with Ultimately, the, what I think yeah. would happen is it's going to build up in that berm and it's going to find their driveway opening and discharge to the road. Yeah, their drives, you have to play with it. I've been playing with it. So I work, I'm working on a 100-foot long swale on the side of my house, and it's been interesting what the water does. So, and the other thing is, when we talked last time, the difference between the swale design and the closed pipe design was $80,000. We said, and I think this was only for Shady Lane, so. Yeah. Um, we said 260 for the swale and three, 340 through 60 for the closed pipe. That's and I was wondering, like, how did you cost that out? Is that like standard numbers that you would choose, or is that talking to contractors? We we bid a lot of projects from our company regularly, so we get some kind of some checks along the way throughout the year. Um, we do throw some contingencies on cost estimates, and at the level we're at at this moment, we haven't gone to a contractor and said, "Can you throw a price at this?" Because we're just not far enough along down the road. Um, certainly, as we get further into design, we will. We will send a plan out to a contractor and say, "Hey, you know, what do you think about this? Are we are we close on price?" And they'll provide us some feedback. Um, generally, our pricing was from from projects we've done of similar size and nature. Um, I think the total that we ended up submitting for the grant, Robert, was three seventy five. I think it was one hundred eighty seven five town match and then one hundred eighty seven grant money, but I, I could be wrong in that. Um, and so that gave us kind of a little bit of wiggle room because I think when I originally talked to you, we were a little bit lower on that price. Okay. Um, but yeah, we've kind of given ourselves some wiggle room. And we also build things into cost estimates when we do at this level, contingency numbers so that we cover things that maybe we're not thinking about at this point, whether that may be, you know, certainly we didn't cover every mailbox or stone or anything else that needs landscaping that needs to be brought back. So, um, you know, we kind of give ourselves contingency so that we can kind of cover those things from that perspective. And how much of the work will be done by local companies in Red Hook or Dutchess County so we get that economic uh, reinvestment? Because like local businesses generally reinvest 48% of what they make in the community, and major retailers and big boxes only do 14%. Sure. So are we able to use focus on using local talent and local companies, or do we have to go outside Dutchess County to find people with the equipment and know how to do this. Robert, you take a shot? Sure. The, the short answer is, unfortunately, we can't have a local preference. Uh, New York State does not allow us to do that. We have to go out to bid for projects. Um, what we do, I think uh, Ryan would agree, typically find is that you do see local contractors bidding on it because oftentimes it requires uh, the movement of equipment. Um, and staging and so on and so forth, and they have no place to put their equipment locally. Um, but that said, we, we have to, because they're taxpayer funds, we have to take the uh, lowest uh, acceptable uh, bid, okay. unfortunately. Yeah. That's, that's I know. The law, that's the law. Okay. I know, yeah. Um, then, I know this is a long shot, and we've talked about this before, but I made a copy of this page from the initial plan where you have the 1955 photograph of the land and then you have the developed photograph and it just seems that there's an area between apple tree and birchwood i think you addressed this but it's so dark it's actually standing water in 1955 and now when you look at the new plan it looks like someone filled it in and just pushed the water over so like it just seems like something happened there like it was made to be dry by some pipe missing that can't be found now yeah. or something weird like that and I mean it's like what a developer was allowed to do in 1955 versus 2023 so I just was wondering is there any chance we can pursue this after we if we ever make it through this so I think Robert what he's talking about is there's a there was a at one point a drainage pipe that's located behind all the property properties uh, that once some of them are on Birchwood, some of them are on Apple Tree, there was this wet area that was there. It appears to at one point be filled in, and there's a drainage structure in the back area there. There's no evidence of a pipe that, that protrudes out any further longer. 
Um, you know, I, I don't know from a town road perspective, that's not having an impact on a town on the town road at this point, right. um, but it, it does appear to be having an impact on residents' private property and backyards. So it would be a matter of getting everybody along there to allow work to happen. And to pay for it. What? And to pay for it. Yeah, right. They'd have to kick in money that would be issued. That wasn't received well when I did the canvassing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, um, people paying for things were well. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you all, and thank you for your work, Ryan. Thank you. Of course, sure. Thank you for pursuing it for sure, us. Sure, sure, sure. Um, anything else, town board members, on, on either one of the two issues? Okay. Um, may we entertain a motion to approve change order two with the typo corrected as? Uh, mentioned by our attorney to the town. So, um, no. second. <laughs> well, that was a close one. Um, thank you, Jay. For seconding it, all in favor, Bill Hamill, aye. For myself, aye. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, we need to call public hearings to revise. The uh, fire contracts based upon the successful public referendum to increase the LOSAP amount. Congratulations to the public for advancing an important initiative that we hope will be just one of many tools to incentivize our volunteer firefighters to continue their dedicated work. <coughs> there are so many reasons why we need them, not the least of which is they are um, directly uh, responsible for much of our financial stability. If we had to have paid fire companies, we'd be looking at a couple million dollars more in taxes that we would have to levy. Um, so we need to revise our contracts, um, and we need to uh, revise our IMA as it relates to low set. So, um, originally thought we would do this for November 28, but we're we're making. I think we're going to make some changes to uh, our meeting schedule. Our next meeting was, as always, the fourth Wednesday of the month, which happens to fall eight days from now, the day before Thanksgiving, the night before, I should say. And I don't think anybody to do that. So we're looking at the possibility of rescheduling that meeting to the 28th. And then, um, and so do we have a, a motion for that, Jacob? So moved. Second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, Julia? I vote aye, but remind you that I can't be there on the 28th. Yeah. <laughs> Still counts. It's an aye with a reminder. Um, and then, uh, at the same time, we'd like to, we're, we, we think we're going to need to take some action on a project we're, we're quite excited about, um, but we can't really um, discuss at the moment. Um, on the 21st, let's schedule a special meeting at 7.30, should be a brief meeting. Make a motion. Uh, I make that motion, shall we? Second. Thank you, Jacob. All in favor? <coughs> Julia? Aye. William? Aye. Thank you. So it's a special meeting on the 21st. Reschedule on the 28th. That said, we have resolutions calling for public hearings, and I would like to change that, if possible, so that it's on December 12th. That's the first meeting. First meeting of December, so that we know we have enough time to advertise and announce. We've got resolution. What are we taking up? Uh, 87. Execution of an amendment to the LOSAP intermunicipal agreement. Um, we have that for our public hearing. 
Yes. Well, we'll take up 87. Right. The, uh, the resolution for today would be to establish a date for public hearing, right? Yeah, that'll be half that stuff. Yeah, that yeah. was the first thing in the tax part, I believe. Yes, we do. So let's take up 87 as um, village uh, establishing a date for public hearing regarding the approval by the town board of an amendment to the fire protection district fire service agreement between the town of Reddick and the village of Reddick and the Reddick Fire Company for 23 and 24 and an amendment to the fire protection district fire service agreement between the town of Red Hook and the village of Tivoli for 23 and 24. It's resolution 87. Let's make that for December 12th instead of November 28th as indicated here. Um, 7.35, shall we? Okay. And I so move. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Bill. 12 12. All in favor? Julio? Aye. Jacob? Aye. Okay. So I think we'll wait on the executing the amendment to the LOSAP Intermunicipal Agreement. We'll do that on the same day. All good. Any questions about that, folks, before we table it? That meeting. That, folks, is um, other business. We have Saturday, Saturday. Would you like to make that? Sure. I just want to remind the public that at sunrise on Saturday morning, deer hunting season begins with firearms. It runs till I believe December the 10th. It's a very active season. There's all kinds of hunting throughout the year, but that's a very active activity. We have a lot of visitors who come into town, and we have a lot of public hunting areas like uh, that are DPC protected, like uh, Tivoli Bays, where hunters can hunt. I would encourage people who are hunting, who are not hunting, who are just hiking and being about to wear an orange hat or some other high visibility garment uh, for their own safety. Um, and that, you know, it's something that uh, it's probably the busiest hunting season that there is in this area. Very good. Thanks, Thanks Bill. Bill. Um, for the folks in Forest Park and College Park, um, you should have received the mailing letting you know that the speed limit has been approved by DOT to reduce it to 25 miles an hour. Um, it will take a few months to order the signs and have the highway department replace those, but uh, they'll be forthcoming as uh, the schedule permits. And on that note, um, seeing no other business, I would make a motion that we go into executive session to discuss a matter under negotiation. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, for the folks at home, you probably won't see you before Thanksgiving. We want to wish you and your loved ones um, a wonderful holiday with gratitude to all of you. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Good night.